You've gotten your blue mage to max, you've collected all the new spells, and you've even gotten the new weapon. So what should you do next? Well, the obvious answer is farming content. You could start doing fates for bicolored rewards or potentially begin filling out the blue mage log. But another option you may not have considered is treasure maps, as not only can blue mage do them solo, but it's relatively easy. With that being said, let's go over how you actually do it. As always, when talking about blue mage, the first place you need to start is the spells. And actually, the first one you will always need is etheric mimicry, though this time around, we'll be going with tanking rather than healing as the extra durability it provides will allow us to comfortably survive basically every attack we face. After Mimicry, we have a couple more staples in Mighty Guard and Basic Instinct. Guard is obvious as it gives us survivability and since Treasure Dungeons are instances, we'll be able to take advantage of Instinct, removing the guard penalty and increasing our damage. Now the support spells don't stop there as we'll also want to bring a few healing options like White Wind, which is quick but expensive, Rehydration, which is slow but cheap, and Devour, which heals while also increasing our max HP. You also want to bring some defensive spells like Dragon Force and or Kylonian Gate, which can also double as a powerful damage option. The last support spell of note you'll always want to bring is Bristle, which will greatly enhance our damage output. Speaking of which, we can now move on to our damage spell, starting with the two new spells that have become instant staples, Mortal Flame and Breath of Magic. Both the powerful dots that you'll want to use Bristle to enhance, which will ensure the enemy takes damage constantly, even if you're not actively attacking them. Meaning, as long as you stay alive, the enemy will eventually die. Though you should try to get in as much damage as you can, whether it be with primal spells or the filler of choice for any build with Mighty Guard, Goblin Punch. And with that, we can move on to the last couple of our required spells, Ram's Voice and Ultra Vibration. This is a no brainer. Even though most enemies inside dungeons are immune to it, it will greatly increase your clear speed for the enemies outside. Beyond that, most adds spawned by bosses are in fact susceptible to the combo, removing one of the most annoying elements in many of these dungeon encounters. Now, while that may be the last of the required spells, you still have a lot of slots to fill. And as a golden rule, you'll want to do so with damage, though I do want to make a special mention of two spells in particular. The first being Blood Drain, as if you end up spamming White Wind, you'll quickly run out of mana, so having Blood Drain may come in handy. And the other spell of note is another new one, Dimensional Shift. This is essentially a more efficient and reliable version of Launcher, and as a result, it will greatly increase your outside clear speed. It is by no means required, but it is incredibly convenient. Now before we move on to the actual maps, one last thing to note is if you want, you can change your spells before you enter the portal. It may take some time, however, some spells are better outside than they are inside like dimensional shift so changing it to a damage option might be something you want to consider when it comes to doing map solo the first thing you'll have to deal with is the packs outside but before you even do that you'll want to start by summoning your chocobo companion as extra help never hurts once you do actually open the chest you'll usually want to use ram's voice plus ultra vibration as not only will it just delete the pack but in some cases that's the only pack you'll have to fight meaning you can just go ahead and see if you get a portal however if you do have to fight more than one pack you'll usually deal with them by using a buffed breath the magic to hit all the enemies, then Ram's voice to freeze them. After that, if you have dimensional shift, you'll basically just spam it until breath of magic finishes them off. But if you don't, you'll just have to do whatever damage you have available, and you just want to repeat this until there are no more enemies. Something else to note about these outside fights is if you start in a counter and only one enemy spawns, the second pack will usually appear moments later, so you might want to save your ultra vibration. Once you finish off the packs, you'll be able to open the chest, and if you're lucky, you'll get a portal. Now, there are two different types of treasure dungeons that you can end up getting, either the roulette or the paths. However, they don't really affect much outside the completion time. The first thing you'll want to do upon entering the dungeon is make sure to activate both your Mighty Guard and your Basic Instinct. After that, it's basically a walk in the park. The Path Dungeon will have you killing packs of mobs with Breath of Magic while staying alive, and the Roulette will have you taking on a variety of different bosses where you'll basically be doing the same thing. Of course, the bosses actually have mechanics, so a little more attention is needed, however, none of the fights are really that difficult. That being said, I do still have some tips to offer. First of which is focus on survival. No attack should one-shot you, however, that doesn't mean you should be greedy. As a general rule, I recommend staying above half health and make sure to keep Devour active for extra durability. Speaking of which, while you are able to survive most tank busters, you should try to mitigate them when able, preferably with Kylonian Gate so you can get the bonus damage. Now, when it comes to telling if an attack is a tank buster, it's actually pretty easy. If the attack has a name that sounds like a single target physical attack, like Fang's End, Ram, Straight Punch, or Toy Hammer, it's probably a tank buster. And an extra little tip, if you predict that a Buster is coming, you can use Bristle to buff Divine Cataract when your gate is triggered for massive damage. Moving on from Tank Busters to another type of attack you need to be careful of are those that summon adds. As if you're not careful, you can very easily be overwhelmed, but as I mentioned earlier, most of these can be frozen, meaning they can be shattered with vibration. The one exception to this I've noticed is the Mandragora boss, so to deal with theirs, you'll want to wait until they all group together, then use a buff Breath of Magic, and that should finish them off relatively quickly. And while we're talking about the Mandragoras, randomly or during certain fights, rare enemies are 
going to spawn that if you kill them will give bonus rewards, such as materia, clusters, or a good amount of gil. In most cases, these enemies are harmless, so you can either kill or ignore them. However, I would be careful of the keepers as they can potentially be very dangerous as one of their attacks pulls you to them, which can lead to you getting pulled into AoEs. And this is the last piece of advice I really have to offer. Hopefully you found this helpful and ideally you enjoyed doing it as much as I have. Either way, I wish you the best of luck in your mapping endeavors. And if you're still here, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.